story of, you all know the story about the hare and the rabbit. I mean, the hare and the turtle, right? Low and slow, right? Steady. And what happens is I, I, I kind of correlated the story of the hare and, and the tortoise, right? With the seed and the sower, or the sower and the seed. We all know that seed is what? It's the word. But how many times in your life, in our life, has the word come and it fell by the wayside, but we allowed the fowls to come and gobble it up instead of picking it up? A little twist on that one, isn't it now? How many times has the word come and it fell on the rocky ground or in the midst of our rock-headedness and we didn't allow the Holy Ghost to come and moisturize it so it would grow to what its potential was? Or how many times have we been a thorn And that seed fall in the thorns, but we allowed that thorniness to choke it out. See, I look at that, that's that, that's that rabbit. Always in a hurry. Darting here to there. Always thinking it's got time to do it another day. Isn't that what he did? He ran here, ran there, didn't worry about the finish line, didn't worry about the end. He was more concerned about he was going to win because he was overconfident. He took grace, right? And he turned it into what? Oh. Isn't it amazing that the wayside, the rocky, or I mean the rocky ground, the thorns, and then the good ground, he talked about the good ground, it all grew. But it's only one place where it grew to the potential of what he was looking for. And each and every one of us, I find that even in my own life, we have those areas in our life. We have the wayside in our life. We got the stony or the rocky parts in our life. We got the thorny parts in our life. But we also have good ground in our life. But we sang the song, it's all about you. I'm going to present myself. So what do you think he's looking for? He's looking for the good ground. He's not looking for... He said, he told the boys, he said, you got to build on the solid rock. He's not looking for the bits and pieces. Isn't it amazing that we do the communion? I just said it about the broken pieces of bread, right? And he's looking for the whole loaf. But in our aspect, he is the rock. But you can take the rock and pulverize it and have all those little bits and pieces of that sand, and I'm going to pick this one, I'm going to pick this one, I'm going to, but I'm not taking that one to build on. It's like the rabbit. See, you know what was cool about the tortoise also? He carried his armor with him. He knew who was in control, and he was steady. He didn't get moved by when the rabbit ran by him, probably 100 miles an hour, and that wind, you know, didn't get worried one bit. He was steady. He stayed the course. He stayed focused. He knew what the goal, he set his eye as a flint. 
He knew where he was going. I say it over and over and over again. God's looking for a holy people, a sanctified people, separated people. We all know that. But we got to be honest. You know that song, if we'd only be honest? We got to, the truth of the matter is, we got to be brutally honest. Pastor says it all the time. We got to be honest with ourselves. All this is, this, this isn't a poo poo message. This isn't, let's get down on us, all because we're not, woo, woo, woo. You know what? This is a reality check. We'll sing a song, we want more of you, God, but then we never change anything of our thinking or the way we do things. I'm included. We don't spend enough time here. And I'm not saying right here, right here. I mean, when we're at home. How many, let me, oh, should I even ask? How many people, when pastor said, it's your option to fast, how many of that was your button? How many of that, how many people in here would be honest enough to say, I don't want to see you raise your hands, but say, yep, that pushed my button. How many, how many of us when, you know what, we know. Here's my story that I got. Everybody know the story about the young rich man? He's seen Jesus, right? Matthew 1960, if you want to put it up on the thing. The parallel is in Mark, it's in Luke. He came to Jesus, called him, you know, good master, right? And he goes through all of that. And then he starts asking him all the questions. What must I do to inherit or to receive or to get what? What was he looking for? What? Eternal life. Isn't it amazing he was talking to eternal life and he didn't realize it. I found that amazing. You know what else I found amazing? I found amazing that he knew he was lacking something. Isn't that amazing? See, we'll look at this. I'm looking at, we'll read this passage and we'll think it's all about money and having goods and stuff. You already got the goods. That's what I found so cool about it. We already had the goods. It's Him. But how many times do we don't realize He is the goods that we have and we turn those goods into something that is not to be? I heard a preacher talk about the three things that works in the church that's gobbling up the church. And you know what he said? He said bitterness was number one. I found that amazing. Number two, he talked about, he, he talked about uh, intoxication. He said drug use, but you know what? I can say your lifestyle can be your intoxication. And then the last one he said, sexual immor immorality. And you know what that is? That all, all that is, that's the adulteress. That's because that's when you, married to him, go out and have an affair with somebody else or another system or another whatever. And here you got the goods all along. See, I really didn't know why I got this portion of scripture, what I was going to do with it. And as the events of today have rolled around, I understand. God's saying, you're telling me 
it's all about me. What are you going to do? I think I even heard somebody say in Sunday school, all God's looking for is to see how you're going to respond. I say it all the time. I think I've been saying it as long as I've been coming up here sharing. See, we're so concerned about what is Sister Kathy over here? How is she going to respond? And hear God all the time looking over the portals of your heart, looking to see, because he already knows there. Now, do you see how you're going to respond? And I'll guarantee you that as we respond, me, as Tim, Brother Tim responds to what God is peering at, and I allow him because he is now, not that he hasn't ever changed, but I start to change my priorities in my life because I already got the goods, but I put something before the goods. I've allowed maybe some bitterness, maybe some intoxication, or maybe, what was the other one I said? What was that third one? Oh, sexual immorality happening in my life. I mean, I started fooling around with something I, I had no business fooling around with. But isn't it amazing? He still allows you to have your will. But as I get changing, guess what I'm going to see? <laughs> Don't you love it? Don't you love it? I love it. I love you too, man. Hey, I love you. You know what? I appreciate you so much. I, 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 I do. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you people more than what you realize. And you know what? I'll be the first to admit, I've already said it to you, sometimes I'm going to be a burr under your saddle because you know why? God knows exactly what's going to push your button. And guess what? Y'all going to be a burr under my saddle because God knows exactly what's going to push my button. But he's looking for people. You know, he come down here, and he and he, and and so then then the young man says he says to Jesus, right, right. What do we got so far? We know that he had the goods, because you know what Jesus asked him. He says, "Well, you know the commandments." And isn't it amazing? One of the, one of the passages, it, he he spits it out. To, Jesus says to him, he said, or I mean, the young man says to Jesus, he says, "Well, which one?" How many of us say? You know what to do, but just give me a list. Come on. That's what he did. Which one? And isn't it amazing that God deals with, isn't it amazing that God deals with, he didn't deal with the upper ones. Can I say it like that? The ones dealing with God, he dealt with the ones dealing with y'all. Don't be a brother killer. What was the other one? Don't be a murderer, right? Don't be a brother killer. You know what that means. Everybody knows what a brother killer is, right? That's when you're bitter against your brother. Hmm. Okay. Don't commit adultery. Don't be messing around. When you're married to him, I mean, come on now. How many married people in here can honestly say, I want my spouse to go messing around with somebody else? Get real. Well, what do you think he's saying to us? All right. Don't be messing around. All right. Don't steal. Everybody knows what don't steal is, right? John 10, 10, right? Don't try to come up to him another way. When you know, when you know God has an order, when you know that God has a set purpose, don't try to do it a different way. Well, I just go, I just, I'm just, don't be a thief. Oh, I love this one. Don't bear false witness. Don't be a hypocrite. Oh, remember what they said to Peter? Your speech betrays you. Honor your father and your mother. Oh, that's a good one. 
God, His church. It's a priority. It's a respect issue. And then he had to throw in that last one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Why do you have to throw that one in there? Well, I don't even like my neighbor. now it's crazy here we go let me read this in the message uh, let's see behold uh, and behold one came said unto him good master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life there was a question he said unto him why calls me good there is none good but who God Right? Well, guess what? A God people is a good people. Here we go. But if thou will enter into life, right, keep the commandments. I say to you all the time, all them commandments were, it was God saying, this is who I am. This is who I am. And I'm going to reproduce after my own kind. Here we go. Ah, let's see here. Verse 18. And he said unto me, which one? Remember? Which? I mean, isn't that amazing? Which one? Show, just tell me, tell me where I'm messing up. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me you already know what to do, folks. You know where the issue is? The issue is, brother, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on brother Tim today. Because Tim's not here. No, just a joke. I gotta be a fool to stand here in front of you and tell you I don't know what the issue is in my life. I gotta be a fool to stand here and say, Yeah, Lord, I know where my priorities sometime lie. And isn't it amazing that worship, worship is bending the knee, bending what you wanna do to what he wants to do. So which one? Which, Lord? Jesus said, go through the whole list. All right? And the young man said unto him, I've done all these things. How many times do we say that? God, but I've done all this. I've healed the sick, raised the dead, preached your name. I've seen the eyes of the blind open, the tongue loose, the ears heard. I've done all this, Lord. But Jesus said to him, if thou, will, if thou wilt be perfect. Oh, I'm not reading that in the message. My fault. I liked it in the message. But if, if, if you'll be perfect, he gives them one thing to do. If you want to give it all, all you got. If you want to give it all you got, Jesus replied, go sell your possessions, give everything to the poor. And see, this is what I was saying. He ain't talking about, I don't believe he's talking about money. Money can have you. What he's really talking about is, are you willing to sell it all out for him? Are you willing to lay it all down? 
We'll come here. We'll say, yes, Lord, we will. But I, I'll guarantee you, every one of us, including me, have areas in our lives. Brother Varner used to say this way. I used to love Brother Varner. He used to always say this way. God knows where the box is at. It's in the closet, on the top shelf, way in the back. And that's what he wants to deal with. I'll be the first to say, like Pastor said, we got people in here that have a prophetic anointing. Not that the whole house doesn't have a prophetic anointing, but you need to loosen your tongues. There's others in here that have functions and ability that God has graced you with that you need to loose yourself to the hand of the Lord, including me. This isn't a get on. This is a get on with it. You got it? This is a get on with it. God wants... I, I say this to my youth group all the time, don't I? There's more in you than what you give yourself credit for. You got the goods. If you got him, you got the goods. Here we go. So you got to give it all up. You got to change your priorities. You got to. And guess what happened? That was the last thing the young man expected to hear. How many times has God come to us, put his finger on something in our life? And that was the last thing we expected to hear from him. What are you dealing with that, God? Is today the day that you're going to deal with that? Well, we heard on New Year's Eve, today's the day. And guess what? When you get to tomorrow, tomorrow's going to be today. That God wants to deal with something in your life. And so crestfallen, he walked away, was holding on tight. He was holding on tight to a lot of things. God wants to start loosening things in your lives. Pastor got down and say, get sick of the people, people dying, getting sick, getting this, getting that, getting all these things. But you know what? I'm not saying there is a proving ground. And Sister Tammy said, guess what? I started looking up all this stuff. Next thing I know, I'm being tested in it. Well, guess what? You're going to be tested in it. But the goods are in you. And this is what's so cool about this portion of Scripture. He gets down here in the end. I'm going to jump because of time. Right? And what did he say? Here we go. Let's go. He goes through the whole thing about the camel going through the eye of the needle. Right? Ain't going to happen. But what does he say? Jesus looked hard at them and said, no chance at all if you think you can pull it off yourself every chance in the world if you trust God to do it. Let's put it to you in the King James. With men, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. You know, I have such a hope. I have such an expectation, and, a, and I'm just beside myself sometimes. Because you know what the Lord is doing to me? He's getting me now to look with these, and here with these, but to look by the Spirit. And I pray every one of you today, I challenge you today to take a deep look. We all need it, folks. Come on. And this isn't saying, hey, 
you know, you, you, can't, Sister Kathy, you got all kinds of issues. It ain't pointing fingers. She already knows she's got issues. And the truth of the matter is, most of us know she's got issues. But the thing is, do we pray that God will move in her life in the supernatural that would change her circumstances of her issues? Not that it takes her out of them issues, but that this up here would start to be transformed, that she would start to look at it and reprioritize things in her life that she can change. Same here. You think, Pastor, he gets up here, he's honest. He's probably one of the most honest people I know. He says it all the time, I got issues. And the truth of the matter is, if the Holy Ghost came in here, or if the prophet came in here, we'd all, we, we'd all be saying, you, you coming in peace, or you coming in? And if he started like Pastor, all he said, come in and start putting his finger up. God doesn't want to really do it like that. I think the Lord would rather come and say, hey, you sing a song that says it's all about me, and then you say, you know, you want a heart of worship, and you want to sacrifice, and you want to lay it all down, and it's all about, well... starts at home, doesn't it, Tammy? It does. Oh, Brother Tim, you're saying we're bad people. No, I didn't say that at all. Oh, you're beating us up. No, I ain't beating you up either. Because guess what? I'm going to be the first partaker of it. True? You know the little mojis? What are those, those mojis? Right? So, with men it's, right? But with God it's. Right? Isn't that cool? <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes because I start thinking about God, how cool he is. What was it, Josiah, we were talking about? He's, he's incomprehensible sometimes to us. But he doesn't want it to be that way. Isn't that what's cool about it? I mean, he says, he makes that whole statement. My ways aren't your ways, my thoughts. But he wants them to be. But he gives you the choice. He gives me the choice. Do I want God's ways to be my ways or don't I? Guess what? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. God wants to deal with those times when I don't. He doesn't need to deal with times that I do because I'm already on board with them. It's when I kick against the pricks. It's when I start messing around with something I shouldn't be. It's when the seed of the word was planted or sown I didn't take much thought in it. I let the dirty bird just come and gobble it up. Got a great expectation for this people. You. We say it all the time. I mean, we, we make it a cliche. This, this, is, this is the part that we need to take serious. We make it a cliche. God didn't bring you here by happenstance. Guess what? He didn't. Pastor been saying for how many years? 35 years probably. You need to know why God brought you here. Find your place. Brother Sexton used to say, find your niche and flow in it. Flow in it. I encourage you, I challenge you today to flow where God has you set. Set your goal. Set your eye on the mark. Live life, but live the God life. See, he puts it all in you because when those testings and trials and tribulation come, what do you think is going to get you through it? With men... 
Brother Tim used to do a lot of with Brother Tim. Oh, I was born again. But I still try to do it on my own. And guess what I found out? But as I start to release, when I start to understand where God has placed me, what the calling is, what the function that he's put us together as a loaf. Yeah, he does, Brother Bud. God likes it. I love you folks. I challenge you today. I challenge you today. Set your priorities. Fresh and anew. I mean, it's not wrong. It's not wrong to take a hard look sometimes at the way we do things, you know. Remember Peter? They said to him, Peter, hey, what must we do? Repent. Change. The winds of change have come. They're blowing. My wind chimes are. I can hear it. Father, in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, Lord, we just love you today. Lord, you know all. You orchestrated everything today. Your hand's in the midst, Father. God, we know you're here. Just pray by your spirit, God, that you would do that work. Father, we know that individually we have to make that choice. I pray there be a conviction of the Holy Ghost, God. That, Lord, that we would allow you to flow freely. And Father, as a house, as a family, as this body that you've brought together, Lord, that we would flow as one loaf, Lord. No more of the bits and pieces, the broken and the burnt ones but God as a whole loaf. Baked in the fire. God, we just bless you today. There is no other, no other thing, no other desire or purpose that we have today, Lord, but to bless you. God, to give you praise to worship, Lord, to bow before you, God, to lay it all down, Lord, to pick up our cross and run after you, Lord. I bless this people. I challenge this people, God, that, God, that they would leave this place with an overcoming spirit, that, God, with you, all things are possible. We love you. We bless you. We praise you, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Anything? All right. Love y'all. Loving one another. Loving one another.